Hi everyone, this is Denise with In Liquid Color, and today we're going to be taking a look at color mixing using the three primary colors of red, yellow, and blue. We're also going to be taking a look at a split complementary color wheel using two shades of red, yellow, and blue each, splitting those into warm and cool colors. And we're also going to be taking a look at an alternative palette um, of earthier colors containing a reddish pigment, a gold, and an earthy blue color as well. First, we're going to start off by talking about primary colors. These are colors that can't be mixed using other pigments, or at least that's mostly true. You can make different shades of red, yellow, and blue based on the pigments that you start off with. But for simple sake, we're going to go visit primary school and talk about red, yellow, and blue being the basis of all of the other colors that we can make on our palette. This first, pa uh, this first color wheel that I'm making here is just a very simple one containing red, yellow, and blue. And then right next to it, I'm going to duplicate those colors so that I can start to make my secondary colors. Secondary colors are the first uh, color in between both of the primary colors on either side of it. So if you mix red and yellow together, you get orange. If you mix red and blue together, you get violet or purple. And if you mix blue and yellow together, you get green. Most people are familiar with this concept and it's usually not too hard um, to try and convey that. The next level, if we break it down even further, is that we're going to talk about tertiary colors. Tertiary colors are the colors that are mixed in between primaries and secondaries. So here I'm going to go ahead and lay out my primary colors in a larger color wheel that has 12 sections on it. The primary colors are going to be spaced equidistant apart from each other. And here I'm using Windsor Red, uh, Permanent Yellow Light, and Ultramarine. When I start mixing my secondary colors, I'm going to put those directly in between all of my primaries, leaving spaces on either side of them for our tertiary colors that we're going to mix. I'm using the same colors as before and only mixing up new uh, paint if I need a little bit more to add to that. Now for a tertiary color, we're going to take the color, um, the secondary color orange and mix that with the uh, primary color of yellow to get yellow orange. We're going to repeat this process to make red orange on the other side when we mix red together with orange to get a redder version of that color. Now tertiary colors are referred to by the primary name followed by the secondary name. So this color here is going to be yellow green and then this is blue green. We're going to repeat the same process with the blue violet and the red violet as well. So this color wheel accounts for three of our primary colors, but doesn't address the other three primary colors I showed at the beginning of this video. In order to account for them, we'll have to make a new color wheel called a split primary color wheel. I'm going to trace the inside and outside of a roll of masking tape, and I'm going to divide that into three sections. I'm going to place my warmer red. That's the red that leads a little bit more towards orange. Um, and I'm going to mix that directly on my color wheel with my yellow that also leans a little bit more towards orange. You can see my color swatches at the top of the screen. So there's a yellow that looks very neutral and then there's a yellow that looks a, a quite a bit warmer. And when I mix those together, I'm going to get a nice, clear, bright orange color. I'm going to continue mixing on either side of that to get my yellow orange and my red orange. And then I'll move on to the next section of my color wheel where I'm going to be grabbing my cooler yellow, the yellow that I haven't used yet. When I put that on my color wheel, I'm going to be blending for a green and we're going to blend for a very bright, clear, vibrant green on this color wheel. So I'm using my phthalo blue to mix together with my permanent yellow light yellow to get a nice vibrant green in the middle. I'll continue mixing on either side again to get the yellow-green and the blue-green colors. On the last section of my color wheel, I'm going to be using my ultramarine blue, which is a very warm blue, 
and I'm going to be mixing that together with my cool red. Those two colors are closer together on the color wheel, so we're going to get a vibrant, clear uh, violet instead of a darker or deeper violet. My cooler red here is a permanent rose, and when I mix those two colors together, you'll really see that vibrant color pop. Just like with my other two wheels, I'll be mixing a blue violet and a red violet to get those tertiary colors represented on my color wheel. Now I mentioned that the reason we do a split primary color wheel is to get the most vibrant, brightest colors that we can out of our palette by combining the primaries that are closest to each other with the other primaries. But what happens if we combine the primaries that are further away from each other? Here I'm going to be mixing the ultramarine blue with the Windsor red, that's my warm blue and my warm red, which are further apart on the color wheel, to get a violet. You'll notice that this violet is much darker in color, it's almost black, and it's not quite as clear or vibrant as the purple in the color wheel. It's still a beautiful color and may have its uses, but if you're going for that brighter color, you can use the technique we mentioned before. Now I'm going to be mixing that cool red with my warm yellow to get a different shade of orange. Now I have to admit this is a very similar shade of orange. It's a bit darker um, and a bit deeper than the orange on the color wheel. Now the last thing I'll be doing is mixing my warm blue with my cool yellow to get a nice mossy shade of green. This is definitely going to be more subdued than the green in my color wheel, but for landscape and um, floral artists, this is actually a desirable quality. This is where I'm going to be taking a red-brown and mixing it with a conacridone gold to get a very mellow, earthy orange color. Next up, I'll be mixing the quinacridone gold with the indigo or deep blue. This is called Magello Blue. It's from Mission Gold. And I find I use it a lot for shadowy areas in almost all of my animal paintings. I really enjoy this color. It's going to make a nice mossy subdued green. And lastly, we're going to take that same deep blue and we're going to mix it with the red brown to create a very deep dark violet almost black and you'll see me trying to lift some of the paint so that you can see it a little bit more clearly. The last thing I'm going to be doing in this video is mixing up neutrals such as gray, black, and brown by mixing complementary colors together. Complementary colors are colors that are crossed from each other on the color wheel such as blue and orange red and green or purple and yellow, violet and yellow. And when you mix them together, you'll get a different array of grays, blacks, and browns, depending on the values and hues of the colors that you're using. Here in my first mixture, I'm mixing a blue with an orange, um, because I had to mix my orange, you saw me pulling red and yellow, to make a very deep gray, almost black color. If I were to use water to stretch that out, it would in fact be a lighter gray. You'll see me continuing to mix colors in this clip, now with a red and a greenish yellow to make a different shade of brown, so on and so forth. If you have any questions about the techniques I use to mix these colors, please post in the comments below, or if you'd like to see a longer video on mixing neutrals, let me know that too and I'd be happy to make one for you. I'm going to go ahead and turn off my audio while this finishes out and you can give it a watch and I'll be back to show you a couple of last tools that I have for you to learn more about color mixing.
In this last little section of the video, I wanted to show you a couple of the tools I have for exploring my palette. This is a uh, palette chart from my first palette that I had, not the one I was just working off of, but it's close. And I took every color that I had and mixed it with every other color that I had. Now, this is a rather long process. Um, it took several hours to do this. And it's only a snapshot because every time you mix your colors, they're going to look a little bit different um, than they did the last time based on how much of one pigment you have over the other, how much water you have, and the like. However, it was a very useful tool for me to learn what my colors could make when I wasn't as sure about my color mixing options. For instance, yellows and purples make these beautiful vibrant browns that I wouldn't have been aware of if I hadn't done this chart. And likewise with some other color findings as well. This next one is a value chart. Straight down the middle of my value chart are the pigments straight out of the tubes. To the left of the pigment straight out of the tube, I have made them darker using a neutral tint um, and incremental steps down. Now, you can notice on that bottom line there that there's really little variation in that dark blue color, but that's because we're already starting off with such a dark color. You'll see more variation with that lighter green gold in the middle. Likewise, on the other side of the chart, we've tinted them down with water, so that's when you have more water and less pigment, and you try to fade them out incrementally um, until you get almost the white of the paper. Um, and this, again, is easier to do with darker colors because you have further to go to the white than you do with, say, a lighter version of that color. This last chart here is similar to what we were mixing in the last segment of the actual video portion when we were mixing neutral grays and browns. This is taking colors and their opposites to neutralize them in the middle. And the goal here is to uh, make them so that it's neither the first color or the second color that you've used. It's, it's as neutral as you can make it in the middle. So for instance, if I use a red, I would use a green to neutralize that. If I use a dark green, it'll become a grayish color. And if I use a light yellowish green, it might become more of a brown color. My favorite one on this chart is actually that deep yellow and the violet color that makes a beautiful rich brown in the middle. Another big favorite is the ultramarine and the burnt sienna that makes a beautiful uh, Jane's gray in the middle there. So I hope this video was useful uh, for color mixing and please let me know if you have any questions below in the comments or if you'd like me to do a video exploring uh, one of these aspects more in depth. Thank you so much for stopping by. Go ahead and like and subscribe if you haven't already and I'll see you around in the next video.